<laughs> Hi, ladies and gents. Well, I made her to the uh, central eastern area of Canada to come see this guy that just pees all over anybody's yard he wants to. Right? We're going to see this vert that Captain Horseshoes up his ass has won. So uh, this is the very first look at it. Now, I'm running on cat naps at best. I took off last night at, well, it's supposed to be 11.30. I think the plane finally left the ground at 12.30. Got in at 6. And, uh, whatever. Been giving her ever since. Went for breakfast. Went and checked out a yellow coop. And uh, now we're going to go see this vert. So, oh, there it is. Got to get rid of those daytime running lights. Seen a couple mud puddles. Got delivered in the rain. Yeah, it's pretty low in the front actually. Might just have to leave it that way. Nice black inside. Oh yeah. Oh, you did take the plates off. Holy, that's even a stock throw shifter, dude. What year is it? 90. 90. It does, doesn't it? Pop the head on it, pop the little bit of anger. Oh yeah. You get prompt. Really can't complain for two hundred. Two man. Oh, oh shit. Luxury. No prop. <laughs> <laughs> Almost took my hand off with it. That's a stock five O, bud. That's tidy. It is. Got our recall done. Yeah. And removed. <laughs> <laughs> Single pepper shakers, yeah. Ooh, ooh, she's got superior rust proofing. Oh, yeah. Looks like the original solenoids, or at least they reused the rivets. Right. This thing's definitely seen a lot of lithium grease in the hinges or the latches. Fuel doors in the back of Shop Dad's truck. Yeah, that's a nice car. It'll do. I like. It'll do. Top sweet. So, do the canvas tops? No, they don't have this this must be a choice eh to have that seam in it so the seams are up till 91 yeah but like this is not a like so, this would be an aftermarket uh, yeah, canvas yeah, top like yeah. can't you get it without that it would have been nicer yeah paint these little chrome caps black something right because other than that that's a sweet ass top yeah the seals and everything are good yeah what, uh, the other one's got this too. Is it, must be the map pocket hanging a bit and catching on it. Oh yeah. Right? It's just kind of squashed it yeah, out a little all, bit. Oh, someone did try and do the fix. They tried to 
tie like a zip tie wire. Around. Dude, it's even got a Sony in it. Your sponsored tunes. Oh yeah. Oh look with the D bass knob. Right. One, two, and three extra bass. Oh, we got the light bar. Oh yeah, bar. right. Nice. Yeah, man, this is a nice car. Original keys. Yeah, look at the, is are the hinges on that side just absolutely? Oh, they're coated. <laughs> like somebody liked their. They're making sure they're being hinge no grease on this thing. Yeah. No man, this thing's super clean. Pretty quiet mufflers on her. Jesus, that shifter is enormous. See how the windows seal up. Well, my window switch don't work, buddy. Really? Day two, we've uh, survived the first night. Probably more me surviving than anything. No sleep, caught a quick nap in the back of shop dad's truck as we were running around doing Chris's pickups and what have you. And then carried on to his buddy's place last night where the beers were flowing, the fireworks were happening. Hadn't showered, quick little like I say, nap in the back of the Mega Cab Dodge. And then had a little dinner at Chris's buddy's place. Caught a quick nap on the porch. Got back at it again. <laughs> anyway, woke up this morning smelling like bug spray and ass. That was good. And had a little breakfast. Crazy hospitality at Chris's friends. Unreal people. And, uh... Anyway, made our way out to Shop Dad's now, so we're just taking a little walk around the yard, trying to get our heads on straight, checking out the the yard here. We got all kinds of goodies out here, boy. Which probably much like most of you, you've only ever seen these on the old Infamous Projects channel back in the day, the yard of Shop Dad's. So checking out all the goodies. So funny seeing this old Ford here, 78. My mom and dad had a pickup identical to this. F-250 custom. Definitely not in this nice a shape, but I was just a pup when they had it. So, decent shape. This thing's got a Godzilla in it too. That Mr. Notorious, I think, did a lot of the work on. Very, very, very cool truck. Obviously the green is something I'm partial to. This looks good. Right about here. She's alive. Funny what a set of plug wires 
and properly gapped plugs will do for a car. Electric fans work, yeah. They smell like sewer. Check your plugs, check your wires, folks. You never know. Never trust this timing mark, eh, bud? No, never. Well, it's on zero. Which is probably the best thing to be marked, but one assumes that's where it's set to, right? Well, when you have a blower, you're very limited in your window. So it's like you rely on that line. Like you can't see numbers. Yeah. Like, and then, of course, there's the hole versus the. Yeah. The line. The line. All right. Fire it up, we'll throw the uh, light on her and see what we're dealing with. It's a tight shaft around it. It is, and actually like a fairly friendly clutch. It'll buck a little bit at low RPM, but I mean that's kind of standard issue for something like this. folks bit of a vlog update here so <laughs> I don't know I'm trying to think now my life's such a bloody blur on this trip I don't think I got any footage of Chris looking at this yellow coupe but we did this the other day all right so kind of day one when I got here and uh, there's some back and forth between buyer and seller on settling on a price at any rate, when we left, it was kind of, let's agree to disagree and everybody goes their way, right? Well, Chris, like a dog on a bone, stays after this fella and somehow wears him down, I guess, or I don't know. He, I think he came up a bit and the other guy came down. Anyway, we've come to an agreement. Now this is all at five after seven. After dinner, Dale's loading up a trailer. We're going to get this goddamn car. So, buckle up, folks. We're hitting the road. I didn't get your name either. Oh, Celine. Celine Gary. E-L-I-N. All right. <laughs> what was the total on this? I don't think it's doing it. You gotta come up on the trailer. Yeah. How's everything else looking? Good. Yeah, you're looking good. We made her home and sold the car, one piece. This thing's even bright at night. <laughs> and Chris, believe it or not, is already looking at alterations. What'd you find? Found the boxes. 
Wait, you're opening them now, Dave. Okay? I gotta make sure it's all there. You gotta let the leather breathe. Look at they've been compact. The they've been squeezed all this time. You gotta make sure I don't cut the leather. I'm gonna squeeze you. Why? You don't need to. You can go to bed. Not this one. I know how to lock the door. No, I'm gonna lock the door. I'm gonna lock you out. <laughs> you can sleep on the porch. Nice tape job. Skunks. Hey, save that box. Are you building something? Oh, yeah. Well, we got to wrap the can wrap up this light bar. Oh, you're serious. Well, he didn't stutter. Today, Junior. Sometimes, you know, he likes to make calculated decisions. Good games. Yeah, this stuff doesn't take ice this How long have those been sitting back there? When did I bring them up? Like two, three years ago? Two years See, ago? This one, right? This one I want to make sure. See, it's a tight squeeze to get two bolts in there. Because I'll do that one. Well, look in the, the barn. I might even have some uh, two and a half or three inch right eight out in the back. There's and then you just take the other seat tracks off and you weld them right to that. And then drop you your water. <laughs> What else is the wires are always going out of Huh? Yeah, it's fine. Tell me that won't look good in that car. Well. It's like it was meant to be. They fit the, the color combo, that's for sure. No, the question is, hopefully the stuff to make them go together is in the other box. Rolling in my 5.0. We are heading out. We've had some uh, recent unfoldings that have meant that uh, we're no longer driving separate cars. We're now driving the Vert, which was the original plan. It is. Good news and bad news. Like, I'm not upset about it. No. Like, it's actually the smart thing to do. Especially considering the safety you know, issues. So the yellow car's got tires on it from 2000. And uh, we were doing the shit shower shave, one guy, next guy, whatever. And so Chris went first and I actually went and mailed myself a package. And then uh, he went to get fuel in the yellow car. So he comes back, I get out of the shower. He's like, yeah, that thing's got flat spots so bad that like I couldn't even warm them up. <laughs> like given what, probably a 15 kilometer round trip. So, the tires are shit. Um, and the only option was the ponies, which the tires are shit. Yeah. So, we had no real good options. So, uh, the third, option C, was send it on a trailer with uh, Braden. He's going to bring it down because he's coming down to Motor City. And he's got the right truck to haul it with. So, it's going back on a trailer. Now we did do some work to it. I don't know, did you film any of that? I did not. I don't think I did either. So, it got some Recaros, some yellow stitched Recaros, uh, which those are supposed to be for Lemon Drop, which Lemon Drop may no longer be a thing. <laughs> Chris has got lots to fill you guys in on, yeah. and I'm sure will in the very near future. But anyway, we're just uh, heading out of what was formerly known as the Great White North. And so sit down.
beautiful Detroit Windsor to the Henry. It's been a time, folks, <laughs> to which we have done an absolutely horrific job trying to capture any of this, but we've lived it firsthand, and you probably would not have wanted to hear the blue smoke that was flying out of our mouths for the last 12 hours. Yeah. No, no one needs to see me like that. Across the border, fine, right? All was yeah. well there. Yeah. Had an Airbnb booked, to which, I mean, in all the times that I've rented Airbnbs at least, I don't know, a dozen times. Yeah, unless you go to the wrong one by mistake. Well, that, that but is... we were at the right entrance this time. We, uh, yeah, we got to our spot last night and had half-assed check-in instructions, to which did not tell the whole story. So, and it's pissing rain. So we're trying to get out of the convertible out of a parking lot, get to this door that was sort of goofy to find. And then what, we had 50% of the instructions? Yeah, so we had the keypad once you got inside the breezeway, if you will. But like that initial door was on some machine. That took your photo and like... Yeah, and you needed an RFID, this chip, and all that was left out. It just, the instruction started assuming you could get into that door. Yeah. And that turned into, and this is, guys, like 11 o'clock at night. We were well, on the road. It started at like 11.30, and we finally got in at 12.30? Yeah. Quarter to one? Because we were hoping to grab a drink before the one place closed at midnight. You know, we were on the road for six hours. Like Gary said, it was pouring down rain. There was nowhere either to take cover. We did find a little, you know, alley breezeway thing, deal. breezeway. And the people were super nice in there. They were like, even though they were cleaning up and singing with their music super loud, um, they offered if you know we needed a chair or wanted to sit down or anything. And the host on Airbnb, my phone, my battery was down to like eight percent. The host is taking like five minutes to respond to any message, if not ten. Like it took you, a good hour to get in. You get the little typing <laughs> notification, like they're saying trying to say something, and then radio silence. And then yeah. typing, radio silence. It's like they genuinely didn't even know the process. So whether they're managing the property for somebody, on behalf of somebody, but yeah, absolute gong show. And then... Yeah, they're like, okay, then we find out we need to get to a lockbox. Yeah. That's supposed to have an eye on it. And no care was taken in the written message to tell you like, is this a capital I, little I? Is it an L? Is it an L, a, a one? one? We don't know, right? So we found one that was like, looked like an H. So like I'm talking big top line, bottom line, right? So serifs. It, yeah. <laughs> anyway, tried the code, pissing rain. We get the RFID. We're like, okay, we're in. And eh, won't go. And yeah. eh, won't go. We're back to like the message icon, right? We're typing. Oh my God. So then we gave it like the the old college try, you just run it all over the place. We got a green light, we're through there. The, the elevator was easy. Yeah, yeah. The next, there next was like a was call fun. box, you punched in a code, that got us in where the elevator was, that was easy. Then we get to the door, that's supposed to have a code. Well, that code doesn't work. <laughs> so then again, waiting for, you know, typings going, going away, message finally comes back. Oh, you need to use that same RFID chip from the first door on your actually room door. So then it's like, okay, well, there's going to be me, Gary, and our better half staying here. We're not all going to be together at the same time. And we, we need only, to. Yeah. Like, where's the other chip? Or can you make codes that actually work? Nope. Sorry. Property manager only gave us one chip. So. <laughs> and that's just to get in. That's, yeah. Now we're, we just crested the, the door of the air apartment that we rented. So then we get in and it's like hasn't been cleaned there's a sheet on the bed 
and a dirty duvet in each closet. Like just bunched up, like stuffed in the corner. And like, I'm like, oh, maybe it's clean or they just didn't put something on there. But like rule number one, like, like we know hotels usually don't clean the top covers. But like I just gave it like a little whiff and I'm like, this shit ain't clean. Yeah. So uh, whatever. We tried to blow off a little steam. No TP. Oh yeah, no shit tickets. Like none. Like not a roll, not a square. There was two forks, a one spoon, knife, and a knife. <laughs> yeah. Like there's four of us that are supposed to be staying here, you know. And like listen, we're we're not divas either, right? Like I mean I am. <laughs> no, but like I seriously, am. we've stayed in some shit. We have, but this wasn't booked to be shit one of those things where like okay we can sleep fully clothed if we have to and we don't care this is something like we have better halves if they had been with us and like you know mine was like oh my god i'm so sorry i wish i I could be there to help i'm like no you don't i I don't wish you were here yeah (laughs) so needless to say crash in our clothes and uh sleep in somewhat kind of doze both of us this morning separate rooms and uh Anyway, get up, and he, you were doing something else. Yeah, I was actually like FaceTiming, well, WhatsApp timing. With, oh, right. With, uh, with Britt. Yeah. And then like, as I'm doing that, through the corner of my eye is like the, the island of the kitchen. I'm like, like I'm trying to FaceTime, I'm like, is there water spots on my top of my laptop? And I'm like, just like, this can't be. Like, am I dreaming that there's like some sort of like I put some sort of vinyl decal on the top that looks like water? And then I saw the drip, like literally from the ceiling, like land on it and splash. Well, and then so meanwhile, as this is going on, right, obviously unbeknownst to me, I'm sitting on the couch and I'm like, I can hear like a drip sound. But like, this is just all thoughts going through my head, but it's been pissing rain for 12 hours straight. Like, it must be something on the deck or whatever. Anyway, this is about the time Chris comes out from FaceTime and, and, uh... Interesting first night stay at the Airbnb. All our stuff was on the island. I'm actually quite surprised that my camera seems to be working right now. It was soaked. All Chris's stuff is soaked. been pissing rain and this whole kitchen area is well flooded and we got a bit of an electrical hazard as well looks like the old girl's still holding up we don't know what the interior of it looks like right now it does seal pretty good though so we're hopeful doesn't look real promising out there right now but it is only what Wednesday well good news is it seems like my camera's working are you all laundered I think so it's a little fluffy now which looks like it went through the wash Chris's uh, laptop is in rice right now so the kitchen gave us some rice. At any rate, uh, I know if Robert Miller sees this, he's going to eat us up because this is Why didn't you stuff. have a videographer glued to your asses <laughs> recording that? Yeah, we were kicking rocks last night and most of today. So anyway, we are on the men now and uh, we're actually going to head over to NPD. And then we're off to Glen Robitaille's, where Bill Butler and Tom Clark, Sinus Built, all those guys are over there organizing the show. We're going to go give them a hand. Most definitely have a beer. Barbecue tonight. Yeah. I don't know if anybody's going to be bringing their cars, because it is 
scheduled to rain all day today, but then go to like 85, 90 tomorrow and straight sun. So yeah. we're in the, uh, the blow clear, clear skies ahead. Yeah. We're at NPD folks. Look at this photo op. Hell, I better get one too. <laughs> That'll do. All right, folks, I'll bring you into this here. Let's see what MPD's all about. Great. Thank you, sir. Beauty. Garden? Not that I can think of. Any other parts? It sounded like you rattled off everything in the catalog, so. Discount parts. So this beauty. A little inside. Out. Oh. Fifty bucks. Retail eighty one fifty nine. No returns. Good PDR guy to have that tuned up in no time. Just don't really have to worry about the PDR if you're gonna be painting it. Got all kinds of goodies in here. Wall of Fame. Parts for days. I know, is it clean? Oh. It's all original. Nothing's been touched. This is everything. The seats, it's orig carpet's original. Everything you're looking at is original. Like, look at this thing. Yeah, I like, look at all the seat belts in the console. See, you put the seat belts. Did you take the quads off this thing? No, oh, they were off. How you doing? <laughs> this is, uh... This is a good way to freaking tattoo my forehead. Dude, sure. There is, there is no good place to put your mind in this car. No. Holy Christ. If the top oh, was down. Shit. There we go. Good do I get there? gracious. Yeah, I thought the top was already close. Double tree hill to hotel. I we should have done sit in the back window and stuff our heads out that way. <laughs> wow. I don't know if you get the full impression of how tight this is. That's it, right? Style bar eats foreheads. And yeah, my head is resting minutes. on the back. Yeah, don't crash into anything. Four minutes, boy. It's gonna be a bad day. Oh, Jesus, and I got that, a spotlight too. That brake light is a real pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no more bitching. It's a free ride. We're not bitching. We're laughing. Yeah, this is Fox bodying. I mean, the inside of this thing is fucking clean. Right? The uh. You have to go there, bud. I'll do the. I know, like the, the mechanism. I mean, it's not, it's not like dominant clean down there, but it is damn clean. Totally. Well, you wouldn't think it'd be this hard to find a goddamn car wash, but I think we just drove. I don't know. 
10 miles? Easily. To find this beauty. It's like car washes are non-existent in Detroit. Okay, what do we got here? We got brakes. I'll spray it with the handle if yeah, need be. Yeah, she's not as dirty as I figured it would be. Especially for all the shit they put on the roads and on terrible. Party going on. Working at the car wash. Brand new used. Brand new used. <whistles> the old Cabernet cleans up pretty good. Very nice. I like. Now we know what it's like to roll with uh, roll like Angel, oh, old Cabernet Fox. Yeah. This is probably the cleanest we've filmed it. <laughs> yeah. The camera always makes things look fine. That's true. It's favorable. She does shine pretty good though. It's nice paint. You trying to case the joint or what? What? You trying to case the joint? I, I'm about to smash the thing actually, <laughs> if you want me to tell you honestly. Gotta clean up the old girl. Go through a whole store. Jesus Christ, you're smoking it out in here. Dirt. It Joe wasn't really dirty. A it was just kind of like a. Alright, in 0.5 miles, you're going to go 12 east to the right. Man, this, the air conditioning on this thing actually. It does have a bit of a personality, Britt. Oh, it does? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, this is oh, a geez. good one. <laughs> Detroit needs to invest in a road planer. Really knock the top, top high well, side they off. They probably wanted to make sure that they could rebuild the economy before they could, you know, waste all the millions in redoing all the infrastructure again. Well, maybe. Oh. Okay, so you're going to be buried right up here. East, 12 east. Jesus. Is it oh, huh? oh my gosh. Speed bumps. Oh god. They don't need speed bumps because you can't yeah, go no. fast enough the, to. The road's a natural speed bump. Unreal. Cars are out. Oh, oh that's a soft one. <laughs> Service, please. Keeps it all stable and chases you. Yep. Hey, can I sign your fan shroud? Okay. Can I'll pencil that on. Yeah. An erasable pencil. These are very rare. The one right there, the you guys going to tomorrow, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. One, day one day early. Yeah. One day early. Ooh. Pre release. Oh, Gary, my boob. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Good to see you. Good seeing you. Yeah. I saw Chris. He said you were floating around. Yes, sir. Right. Well, we were holding the bar down. Right? Good deal. Good deal. Yeah. That's the important thing. This is it. I, I'm not going to bring the beer to show that. <laughs> Mikey Johnson picked up a couple of two fours. We got beers coming out our ears. Yeah. 
Look at this thing all aired out, huh? Fuck, I thought I was filming and I wasn't. I missed all that shit. Such an idiot. <laughs> what kind of a rookie mistake is that? Zach's car exists, ladies and gents. Look at this thing. How you doing, guys? Good, good. What's up, guys? It made it? Yeah. Good to it see you it too. It. What's happening? <laughs> Let me shut this. Morning. 0600. I got to go down and pick my wife up. A little dusty. Last night things got, uh, we got a little tight. Let's just say that. Late night. Uh, man, I definitely dropped the ball on filming anything at the meet and greet. Like, I was so embarrassing I was holding my camera up okay it's all powered on I'm hitting buttons you know doing the things I'm supposed to be doing to record video watching cars leave burnouts are occurring proper burnouts too like stuff you'd want to watch again and you guys would ultimately want to see you think I was recording no <laughs> like absolute idiot I get back to the hotel last night. We met up with some friends here at the hotel and family, whatever, and having some drinks. And I'm like, oh man, I got some wicked footage. I got nothing. Absolutely nothing. Like, I got some walking around and saying hi to folks and seeing some, some old friends that you only see, you know, once or twice a year. That's it. Like, what a loser. I didn't even know what to say. Like, I could barely get to sleep last night. I'm like, you're such a moron. Anyway, my wife's coming in, so I gotta buzz over and pick her up. I've been to the airport twice in Detroit. Once when I was flying out last year, once this year when we went and picked up Chris's better half. Now I gotta go pick my wife up. So uh, obviously just gonna follow directions, hope for the best. But uh, it is a big airport, so I don't know. We're gonna see how this goes. Take you guys along for the ride. You can meet my wife, and uh, then the day begins. So this is Friday. Um, we're trying to figure out how the hell we're going to do this. Okay, we got the drive to hell today, but we also, because we blew it so bad last year, trying to get the shit box finished and get up here, we also want to see some sights, right? Like maybe check out the Henry Ford Museum. There's some. There's such cool history in Detroit. So uh, we got to figure that all out on very little sleep all right I think we've made it um, there's a lot of construction going on over here at the airport actually you know to be honest with you there's a lot of construction going around all over Detroit thank goodness too because the roads are awful <laughs> like they really need to invest in some sort of a road planer that like knocks the highs out and fills the lows we're going to play tourist <laughs> since we didn't get to last year yeah so had a little bracky left mama bear to have a siesta did you tell her something alarm no but i'll just uh i don't even i left her with the room key too i gotta get another one buzzed oh up. i have it well you got the backup sweet yeah. uh we'll just kick her out of the wrapper when it's happy hour and uh never heard of the everglades edition bronco everglades yeah everglades all glades yeah. all kinds of stuff here in motor city um, so yeah, we're gonna go play tourists. We're gonna check out the Henry Ford Museum of Innovation, I believe. Yep. Well, he was. 
was an innovation, a pioneer of innovation. Big time, yeah. I've actually watched some uh, videos that people have put together on the life and times of. Some get deeper than others, and it's a hell of a story that he's got. Wild. Actually, like, some pretty massive lip stands. Like, total recovery. Obviously, he's total recovery. Speed bumps, man. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, big one. Yeah, I did this today, too. Pulled into the uh, bus lane to avoid it. Actually, there's one more coming, dude. Check this out. Dude, that's a GTD. Look at the wing on it. Oh, yeah. oh he's coming up hot. Fastest one on the track right now. Totally. Hi. Hi. <laughs> this is putting me on the spot again. Well, we've kind of said hi quickly, but we haven't talked very much today. No. And this is the first time I turned my camera on, sadly enough. And we are walking by all kinds of beautiful cars, so you guys don't need to see us anymore. We're going to do a little walk around, hubby and wife cruise through the cars. Handful, man. Well, I just want a little piece, eh? Little piece. Go for it. Hey, how are y'all feeling? Really? Hi, I'm Prina. Nice to meet you.
Yeah, let's do this. We'll go. Yeah. I should have put it in a triangle. You got it, there we go. Heck yeah. <laughs> Did I? Oh, I turned it on too. Oh my gosh. Look, Look at this. Tiny that thing is. High tech shit, see? What's going on, everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're doing the one walk around that I've done all day. Okay. A million mile an hour. Yep. Right? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. And then back to the shade. How long does it take you? Like three hours to just make one trip around? Well, no, actually, we went pretty quick. I really? think I think maybe bringing the bride helps. <laughs> yeah. Right? Away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Works out good. So. Well, this shade's nice here. It helps, oh, yeah. doesn't it? It's like big time. Oh, 20 I'll just pour under the, under the, the trees. So, babe, just see Mario's plate. Oh, wifey pig. Is that a hint hint? Yeah. <laughs> Time to get at her. Start doing them squats. <laughs> okay. So next thing that we're gonna do is the rare box we want. And while they're looking back to the winner, the rare box is this. Is they're really rushed. Yeah. 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 They're not super loud. And that, bro. Good to see you, buddy. Dude. Good to see you, kiddo. He's he still I, in the old man's hat. He said I could keep it. Did he? Yeah. Hey, now. That's a heck of a deal. See you, buddy. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Off road ready, huh? Yeah. Hillbilly Deluxe. Don't act like you're not impressed. Well, I've, I've done a shit job at filming everything, so I thought we'd film a little downtown Detroit. Hey, there's the buddies. All right, where are we going? Uh, anyway, really. I thought that we were going to a spot. Huh? Right. We'll Grand River is the other side. Go down this way. We'll go that way. Okay, follow you. Go. I thought, uh, what's his name, he said we should go somewhere. Yeah, it's just over there. We can walk this way or whatever. Folks, oh my goodness, what a trip. I am sitting down at my house for the very first time. <laughs> I got things, but my laptop just plugged in, like downloading stuff. This trip has been an absolute whirlwind, but just like last year's, one that I will never, ever, ever forget. Now I should start this off by apologizing because the tail end of the trip was not as well documented 
as the start, which is usually the case. But nonetheless, I figured I'd just kind of sit down here and talk you through a little bit about how things all unfolded. I do have like some phone video bits and pieces, so I'll splice those in as I'm telling you the story. But anyway, typically when you start off planning these trips, everything seems like a good idea, right? And you may have some gaps in your travel plans, but they don't seem like a good idea because the excitement is outweighing all of those gaps. Well, anyway, we were faced with one of those gaps and the closer we got to the tail end of the trip, the bigger the gap seemed. So I flew from British Columbia out to Ontario, got in a car with Chris, drove down across the line. You guys will, if you're watched this far, you've already seen a lot of that video footage. Then in my infinite wisdom, I booked mine and my wife's flight back from like Toronto area, back over to British Columbia. Well, we didn't know how we were gonna get from Detroit up to Toronto. It's about a four and a half hour drive if you don't have any traffic, more on that later. And uh, so yeah, we had no plans on how to do that. We thought, well, I don't know, maybe we'd catch a train, bus, plane, rent a car, we didn't know. So anyway, Chris's cousin, Jeff, absolutely ace of a fella was kind enough to drive us from Detroit to Windsor and this is literally like Windsor and Detroit both hug the river okay so one city looks at the other and all there is between the two of them is one of these fictitious lines that our forefathers drew through the two countries right so anyway we get over the line we, Jeff kicks us out at the Windsor Airport. We rent a car and uh, we're like, well, I guess maybe we could go back to Detroit for the night or do we just stay in Windsor? Well, as it turns out, Caesars, like Caesars Palace from Vegas, has a massive hotel in Windsor, like stunningly beautiful hotel. So we thought, well, let's see if we can get a room there, right? So we go in there, uh, sure enough, they got availability this is all Sunday night and uh, spend the night there so we don't fly out the next day like Monday until 8 30 at night and we needed to pick up like gifts for the kids and get all that stuff out of the way so we were slow to get out of the room we thought you know what let's milk it a bit we got all the time in the world then we ran over to the mall we got some stuff for the kids then we set off on our trip from Windsor to Toronto. And earlier on in my trip, there was all this talk about toll roads around Toronto. And like the tolls are absolutely ridiculous as per the locals. It can be like 80 to a hundred dollars one way. So I'm like, okay, when I put this into my maps, I'm gonna avoid toll rolls. There's no way I'm gonna like rent this car and then get this bill in the mail later on saying, you still owe this much money because you took this toll road. And we had all the time in the world, right? So off we go. We're smooth sailing for the first three and a half hours. Well, I'll be damned if we don't hit traffic. And any traffic in any city that I've ever lived in, you know, unless there's like some horrific accident, you're never in it all that long, right? Like maybe an hour at most. Well, we got into this traffic at like, I guess it would have been 3.30ish in the afternoon. We didn't get out of that traffic. No, it must have been 4.30, pardon me. About 4.30 we got into it. We got into it at 4.30, three and a half hours later, we get out of this traffic. Oh my God. <laughs> One person, oh, <laughs> my guy decides he's gonna take a piss. Everybody pulls over for a pee. <laughs> There's minute. no shame anymore. No. <laughs> 3 30, 4 30, no, 4 30, 5 30, 6 30, 7 30. Yeah, we fly out at 8 30. Okay, now it's a domestic flight, so you only need about an hour in the airport, right? But Pearson Toronto International is huge. There's trains to get you from like terminal to terminal. We pulled into that goddamn airport at 
7.45, which is the, no, about 7.40-ish, had to drop the rental. It was out of, well, it had about three-eighths of a tank of fuel in it. Couldn't fill it up, so they're gonna hose me like four bucks a liter to fill the bloody car up, right? We're running through there. I gotta pee so bad, I can feel my bladder like shaking in my guts every step I take running. We drop the car. We're not sure who to drop the keys off to. We're going back and forth, back and forth, pulling like a proper size bag because, you know, I brought a bunch of t-shirts down Motor City, all that stuff. We get out of there. We get into the airport. We're like, where's the gate? Our ticket doesn't list a gate. We're in the wrong terminal. We got to take a train. We get in this train hoping that it's going in the right direction to the proper terminal we need to. It does. We get to the um, check-in counter, whatever. I got to check my bag because it's so bloody big. Um, big lineup, right? I'm like, oh my God. And I, you know, you never want to be that person that's like, hey, everybody, you know, like I feel like I'm later than you. So I'm going to try and hop the line. Anyway, I lined up. My wife's like, Gary, we got to jump the line. I'm like, well, look, if you feel comfortable doing that, you do it. I'm just going to line up. Somehow that woman worked her magic and got us in real quick. I'm I think for us, in all honesty, check us in. I had to pay extra for my bag because it's overweight now. Anyway, you're just swiping credit cards and trying to run. Uh, we blast through security and take off running our gate so again i mentioned it's not listed on our ticket we're trying to check the tvs like where our flight is i'm like oh my god i think it's b20 which way is b20 we look b20 ghost figure is the furthest one at the far end of the terminal we take off running still haven't peed so and my wife had to pee too so we get to the end of the thing we get to the gate there's like six people left in line like the tail end of zone five or whatever right that are still lined up we got on the bloody plane unreal now actually interesting enough fast forward to today and toronto has flooded highways are closed planes are grounded like absolute carnage so we missed all that anyway by the good graces of the car gods, we got home. And uh, we arrived last night at like, I don't know, 11 o'clock at night. So that's the tail end of my Motor City adventures. What a time. Between flooding Airbnbs to now flooding roads and everything else. like, But all the awesomeness in, bet in between at the show is just like, I don't know. I, I, I get all, I don't know, emotional thinking about it the great people that I got to see that sometimes I only get to see like once a year um, such a good time you know man I wish I could literally do that with all those people every single day that would make my day you know make my life anyway ladies and gents that's the tail end of my Motor City adventures I hope you enjoyed watching this um, I'm sure there's bits and pieces that are more entertaining than others but I do my best to try to take you along for the best ride that I can whenever we're doing these adventures. So thanks so much to each and every one of you for watching and uh, hope to see you guys. If I didn't see you at the show, I hope to see you at the next one. So thanks for watching guys. Take care. Bye for now.